This video is proudly recorded and produced on OpenBSD. Let's talk about the OpenBSD performance optimization. Probably this video would be a bit controversy and many people I assume are going to disagree with me and be a bit like angry at, at what I'm going to say. Anyway, the agenda is as follows. First, we are going to talk about the login class and how you can change your login class. Afterwards, we are going to discuss about the kernel parameter modifications and that one has four topics. One is is simultaneous multi-trading another one is the change in the max proc max files max thread and also there is another one that i didn't put here but i'm going to cover is about the shared memory and i missed it out i i'm just like seeing it right now anyway so what is the login class so a login class is a configuration that determines how much a user in that class can utilize the system resources it was something in my opinion useful in the old days not nowadays anymore it was useful when you had a time for mainframe time sharing machines etc and nowadays most of the devices are used by a single person at the time single user and probably there is not much of points into having something like a login class of course it has other utilities for example the authentications things like that but that's not what we are interested about so the default login class for any user that you create on openbsd falls on the default and this one has a conservative a value assignment the login class file is located under etc login.conf and if you want to assign a better let's say resource allocation to your user it is recommended to change that login class from default to a staff so for that one what you can do simply is to run do as user mod dash l a staff then pass your username also some people argue that it's good to add your user to the staff group as well so you can do that uh, by changing the flag l to g and in case you mess up the login.conf file don't worry there is a link that you can actually pull the default value from and you shouldn't be worried about the misconfiguration of it you can revert it back anytime you wish the second thing is about the kernel parameter modification that one can be set by modifying the etc cctl.conf by contrast of the login class this one actually are applicable system wide so you have to be a bit more careful about it but nonetheless in case that you set invalid value the kernel is smart enough to not set those values and then fall back it falls back to the default so these are the changes that I have applied on my system. For example, I turned on the hyper trading. This one is the most controversy topic, I would say. Afterwards, also, I have increased the number of the processes and the number of the open files plus the number of the max number of threads and the shared memory configurations. And this is my config. And I argue that uh, these configurations vary system to system. So you have to, you, you shouldn't just arbitrarily copy and paste those. So for that matter, I have decided to explain each of them as much as possible. So you have a better understanding of what these parameters mean exactly. Let's just start with the hyper trading. Uh, for hyper trading, we have to actually know that this one is just a trademark and it's basically the implementation of this simultaneous multi trading. And simultaneous multi trading is a process by which a CPU divides up its physical cores into virtual cores that are treated as if they are actual physical cores by the operating system. So, for example, when you see a CPU that has four cores and eight threads, then the hyper threading is involved there and it has actually four real cores and in total it has eight uh, virtual cores and that will give a performance boost between 30 to 50 percent and as i said intel implementation of the smt is called hyper threading you can enable hyper threading permanently or on the fly but keep in mind that 
hyper trading has uh, security implications and due to that one openbsd disables the hyper trading by default and openbsd is not the only operating system that disables hyper trading by default google chromebook also disables hyper trading by default because especially intel actually has a very bad uh, reputation in the hyper trading it has been targeted to the multiple vulnerabilities however if you are trusting the applications that you are actually installing or you are not uh, having unsafe behavior when it comes to browsing then maybe install then maybe enabling the hyper trading is not that bad but you should be very mindful for example i would like to enable hyper trading selectively for instance when I am watching a movie, let's say on YouTube or something, or when I am actually recording a video or doing live streaming. In that case, I have to turn on the hyper threading. Otherwise, actually, my computer str struggles to keep up with the load. But let's say, for example, if I am doing banking or if I am actually logging into something that, uh, that is important for me and I don't want those information to be leaked outside, in that case, I turn off the hyper threading. About this hyper trading, I am also preparing another video to discuss it in more details and also kind of share the expert opinions about this hyper trading and this phenomenon because it's a quite a bit controversial uh, topic. The next kernel parameter that you can modify is the max proc and this one is defined as the maximum total number of the processes that can run at one time system wide. The default value is 1310 and what i set for my machine is a 8192 and simply you can just again modify the cctl conf and then set this max proc there moving on we have max files and this one specifies the initial default number of file descriptors a process is allowed to have for open files at any given time the default value is 7030 i have increased this one to 32k and so far it's working well for me and I have seen also performance increase on my system. The next one is the max thread size and this one again controls the maximum number of threads. The default value again is too low 1950. I have increased this one to 16k to actually kind of adapt to what modern software needs. Now let's go to the another controversial topic and this one is about the shared memory optimization. So there are multiple beliefs here and I also I share my anecdotal experience. So some people on Reddit they argue that this uh, shared memory optimization is not needed at all because those are just useful for the servers especially database servers i have also seen multiple articles on postgres website on red hat about optimizing the oracle database and also i actually cited some of my findings uh, from those websites but i have also found a very old email thread from peter n m hanstein this person is the author of book of a packet filter and years ago he experimented with the shared memory optimizations and he his experience was that modifying and increasing the shared memory optimization has improved his browsing experience now my anecdotal experience kind of match with mr hansen here and i can say that uh, in my case after increasing the shared memory configurations i have seen a snappier uh, browsing experience as well as ffmpeg runs smoothly and i do not get the cannot get the shared memory error or at least i get that one less frequently before that i was getting constantly now that one has reduced quite a bit however you have to keep in mind that there is no universally optimal value for shared memory it's very much independent and requires a lot of not not some i put some here to not discourage you and scare you but to be honest it requires quite a bit of trial and error so be ready to restart your machine quite a bit here i'm going to cover three parameters related to the shared memory one is shm all this one is the total amount of shared memory another one is shm max maximum amount of shared memory and the last one is shm mni 
this one is the shared memory segments so let's see what each of them means and how we can set it and what's the better let's say optimization value for it so the first one SHM max this one actually determines the maximum size of a shared memory segment all of these values are in bytes and can be set half of the size of the actual memory on 64-bit operating system or the CPU architecture and 3 gigabytes on 32-bit operating system. However, on OpenBSD, I couldn't set anything above 2 gigabytes. So the default value is 32 megabytes and I set my for myself to 2 gigabytes. Also, it's interesting to know that Debian has a value that I cannot read. As you can see, the number is actually more or less like an infinity. Then it comes to SHM all. This one sets the total amount of shared memory pages that can be used system wide. Hence, SHM all should always be at least SHM max divided by the page size, and you have to get the ceiling of that amount. On OpenBSD, the page size is 496, and the default value of SHM max is actually 8K. However, I set mine to 512 megabytes and on debian again this value is the same as ssm max and it's more or less like a infinite then we have ssm mni and this one sets the system-wide maximum number of shared memory segments and the default value is 1k I increased mine to 4K. Personally, I didn't see much of improvement when I bumped this one from 1K to 4K. For this one, I followed the, what Debian has set by default, which is 4K, and I set this one to 4K. So feel free to ignore this one here. And lastly, we have something called semaphore. These parameters actually can also be changed. These are the kernel parameters. I have never played around with semaphore. I am not sure whether it's a good idea or whether it's not. However, I have seen on the OpenBSD on laptop blog post and the author suggested to bump the semaphores and also I saw the guideline on the Red Hat Linux of course this optimization is for the Oracle database and there also they suggested some uh, values uh, stuff like that I checked the value I checked the default values between Debian and OpenBSD on Debian the values are insane so I do not personally dare to go and like modify the semaphore values to match those stuff on Debian However, if you want, you can feel free to play around with those and in case that you already did it and you got the better performance experience, feel free to share it on in the comment section so I can learn something and maybe in the future I will create a video in regard to that. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to take a moment to thank Patreon contributors, Grok with 30 generous dollars, Stellar Orbit with 20 generous dollars, OpenBSD Maximalist, Alexander M, Russell Willis, OpenBSD Enthusiast, DM'd, John Collins, and Liquid Mobius.